Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of gout. I'm Dr. Dan Koval. This episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The fantastic images you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung Artis 85 Prestige ultrasound unit. I'm going to show you a few examples of gout, highlighting key teaching points throughout. So in this case, this is a male in his 50s with a history of type 2 diabetes and gout presenting with foot swelling. Here we're looking at the great toe and long axis. This is the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Here's the metatarsal head and the proximal phalanx. And notice that there is this complex dorsal joint effusion here with synovial thickening containing these multiple punctate echogenic foci within it. When we add MV flow, which is a form of microvascular flow imaging that can detect slow flow in small caliber vessels, we see that there is some mild hyperemia here corresponding to the site of patient discomfort and swelling. Now, when we move the transducer a bit more medially, again centered over the metatarsophalangeal joint, what do you notice on this image? Well, we see that there's this punched out erosion at the medial aspect of the first metatarsal head with some overlying synovial hypertrophy. Whenever you're suspecting an erosion on ultrasound, it's important to confirm this in two planes as pseudo-erosions, which are normal contour variations, can sometimes mimic erosions. So when we turn short axis on this area, we can see that there is indeed another punched out erosion there with overhanging edges in the synovial hypertrophy. And this is a typical ultrasound appearance for gout. So gout is a crystal arthropathy due to monosodium urate crystal deposition that occurs in and around the joints. We see this most commonly in males over the age of 40, and there are certain risk factors. So patients who have hyperuricemia, which is an elevated uric acid level, Obesity, diabetes, and hypertension are at increased risk. Also, patients with chronic kidney disease. And there are certain dietary factors. So patients that consume a high volume of purine, which is found in red meat, organ meats like liver, seafood, and also sugary drinks and alcohol. And some patients also have a family history of gout, so there's a genetic component. And clinically, these patients often present with an acute monoarthritis with a red, inflamed, and swollen joint. And this is most commonly at the great toe, at the first metatarsophalangeal joint. And when that occurs in isolation, it's sometimes known as podagra. This can eventually progress to asymmetric polyarticular disease, meaning multiple joints can be involved. And then chronic tophaceous gout can occur. And I'll talk about tophi momentarily. So on ultrasound, we typically see joint effusions, which are often complex and may or may not have these little punctate echogenic foci representing crystals or microtophi. Synovial hypertrophy is common. Erosions, typically at the medial aspect of this distal first metatarsal. Classic appearance of the erosions are that they are juxta-articular in distribution, meaning they're adjacent to the joint but not directly at the joint, so they're kind of near it. And they have these overhanging edges, sometimes described as having a punched out appearance. We can often appreciate this best in real-time evaluation. So here we're, again, we're looking at this metatarsal phalangeal joint of the toe and long axis. Notice that there is an erosion here with overhanging edges, another erosion there, and then there's that large erosion. Again, all these are periarticular in distribution. And then you can see that there's also some synovial thickening within it. When we move a bit more dorsally, we see the normal contour of the metatarsal head. It should be nice and smooth like this without any erosions or irregularity. And then there we see that kind of complex joint effusion with synovial hypertrophy and all these little punctate echogenic foci representing crystals. Okay, let's look at a different patient. So this is another male patient in his 50s with a history of gout presenting with a right hand mass. So here we see in the area of the fourth extensor compartment, there's this amorphous echogenic mass-like structure. When we turn on long axis, we can see there's the structure again, and it's directly overlying the extensor digitorum tendons of that fourth extensor compartment. When we evaluate this with dynamic imaging and having the patient flex and extend the wrist, you can see that these amorphous echogenic structures partially surround the tendon and impinge upon it, but are separate from it. So this is an example of tophaceous gout within the tendon sheath. So a gouty tophus on ultrasound usually appears as this amorphous echogenic area containing these punctate echogenic crystals surrounded by a thin anechoic inflammatory halo. They may have associated cortical erosions if they abut the bone. Not only can they involve the tendon sheaths, but they can also occur within the tendons and also within bursal structures. Other common sites we may see tophaceous gout include the elbow about the olecranon, which is the posterior aspect of the elbow, and around the knee at the patellar tendons and popliteal tendon origin. Speaking of intratendinous gout, this is a patient presenting with foot swelling at the medial foot, also with a history of gout. 
and short axis, there's this amorphous echogenic structure here in the region of the tibialis anterior tendon. When we turn on long axis, you can actually see the tendon fibers here. And then within the tendon, we have this amorphous echogenic mass-like structure containing punctate echogenic foci. As the tendon approaches its insertion on the medial cuneiform and first metatarsal, when we add power Doppler imaging, you can see that there's marked hyperemia, increased vascularity about this tendon, typical for inflammation. And this is an example of intratendinous tophaceous gout involving the tibialis anterior tendon. We can, again, often evaluate that best on real-time imaging. Here we're looking at the tendon in long axis. Notice that there are these echogenic amorphous structures containing punctate echogenic foci within the tendon. We can see that here, all these little punctate echogenic foci. We can see normal compact fibrillar tendon structure here approximately, but then we kind of lose that in the area of this gouty tophus. And then as we move slightly adjacent and distal to the tendon, notice that we do even see some punched out erosions here with overhanging edges, also juxta articulate. Now, there's one last ultrasound finding that I'd like to highlight that's very helpful in the diagnosis of gout. Here, we're returning to that initial case of the patient with the great toe first metatarsal phalangeal joint gout, again, with that punched out periarticular erosion with overhanging edges and overlying synovial hypertrophy. Do you notice any other finding on this image that can help us make the diagnosis of gout? Well, here we have the normal bony cortex, which is echogenic or bright of the metatarsal head. Just overlying that, we have the anechoic cartilage, the hyaline cartilage, and that's normal. But then what's not normal is this second echogenic line on the surface of the cartilage, known as the double contour sign. Here's a different patient also with gout involving the third metacarpophalangeal joint, or the knuckle of the hand. And notice we have a joint effusion surrounding synovial hypertrophy, normal echogenic bony cortex of the metacarpal head, normal anechoic hyaline cartilage, but again this abnormal curvilinear echogenic line on the surface of the cartilage. So this finding is known as the double contour sign. So what's occurring here is that these monosodium urate crystals in gout are actually coating the hyaline cartilage, giving it this hyperechoic appearance. This is also sometimes known as urate icing because we're icing the cartilage. And interestingly, this actually disappears when serum urate levels drop below 6 mg per deciliter. So this is helpful clinically. And to correlate that, we have the above patient here had a uric acid level of 8.8. .8, and this lower patient had a uric acid level of 8, so both above 6 milligrams per deciliter. And this is also distinct from chondrocalcinosis, which we'll see in calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, which is CPPD arthropathy. In that case, you'll actually see echogenic crystals within the cartilage, so they'll be within this anechoic hyaline cartilage as opposed to on the surface. So you can differentiate the two on ultrasound. And just an additional reference I'd like to mention, Dr. Jacobson's book, Fundamentals of Musculoskeletal Ultrasound, very useful and highly recommended. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify, or click the YouTube subscribe button. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, follow us on social media. Links are in the show notes, or click the YouTube posts tab. Until next time, radiology is life.